In this video, we're going to graph lines using slope and y-intercept, using the slope-intercept form of a line. But maybe the lines aren't quite in slope-intercept form yet. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have 3x plus 2y equals 6. Well, to graph a line using the slope and y-intercept, your line has to be in this form. Your equation has to be in this form, y equals mx plus b, which means you have to have y by itself on one side of the equation. You can see from this equation, y is not by itself. We've got a bunch of stuff on the left-hand side of the equation. So we have to put it in slope-intercept form before we can start graphing. That's our goal here, is to graph using slope and y-intercept. Now there's other ways to graph by plotting points and, and other ways, but in this video we're just looking at finding the slope and finding the y-intercept and using them to graph. So our goal here is to isolate y. In order to do that, we need to get rid of the stuff on this side of the equation that's not y. So we're going to start with this term right here, 3x, and we're going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. So when I do that, on the left-hand side of the equation, all I have left is 2y. Now on the right-hand side of the equation, I have 6 minus 3x. I can't combine those because they're not like terms. It's not 3x. So there's really nothing I can do. I can't combine these, so I'm just going to write it. Now I can either write, I'm going to write it both ways for you. I can either write 6 minus 3x like that, just write 6 minus 3x, or I could flip it around and put the negative 3x first, and then the 6 second. Now you have to watch your signs. If you're going to put the negative 3x term first, you have to put the negative 3x like that first. Okay, and then it would be 6, which is a positive 6, so I'd write plus 6. Now the benefit to writing it this way is we're trying to get this in slope-intercept form, right? So we want it to look like y equals mx plus b. So putting the x term first, the 3x first, kind of helps us to see it in the correct form. Well, we still don't have y by itself on the left-hand side because we have this 2 here. So we need to get rid of this 2. So to do that, we are going to divide by 2. And we have to divide each term by 2. So we are left with y equals negative 3x over 2. Now, the easiest way to write this is to sort of pull your numbers out in front like that, negative 3 halves. Just kind of think of this fraction as separate from your x. It's not separate, it's times your x, but if you write it like that, without the x in the numerator, it will fit this mx plus b form a little easier, plus 3. Okay, so now we're ready to graph. Remember, first step when you're graphing is figure out your, your y-intercept. Now, just to be clear, this is called uh, slope-intercept form of a line, but it is specifically the y-intercept, which is your vertical axis here, your x-axis is your hor horizontal axis, and there is such thing as an x-intercept, which is where your line crosses the x-axis, but that has nothing to do with this number. This number is specifically where your line crosses the y-axis. So that's the first thing I want to do, is figure out my y-intercept, which is positive 3, and plot that on my y-axis right there. Second step, is to figure out my slope, which is the number that's times by the x, that's multiplied with the x, which is right here, negative 3 halves. Now remember with a negative slope, uh, you could think of it as negative 3 over positive 2 or positive 3 over negative 2. Those are both equivalent to negative 3 halves when you do your rise over run for your slope. So if I was looking at negative 3 over 2, I would want to rise negative 3, which means to go down 3, and run 2, which would be positive 2. So I'd go down 3 and then right 2. If I thought of the slope as positive 3 over negative 2, I would rise 3 and run negative 2, which would be to the left. Rise 3, run negative 2. And you could do it either way, and these would line up. You don't have to do it both ways. I'm just showing you because it's negative and that question seems to come up a lot. You know, do I put a negative for both of them? And the answer is no. You just put it for one, either or. Because if you put them for both, if you had a negative for both the numerator and the denominator, that would be a positive. And we don't have a positive slope. We have a negative slope. So if you just did, let's say you just went with this one. 
negative 3 over 2. So you'd go down 3 over 2, and then you could do it again. Down 3 over 2, down 3 over 2, as many times as will fit on your graph. You, you wouldn't ha ever have to do the up 3, left 2 part if you didn't want to. You just one or the other. All right, plot your, uh, draw, draw a line connecting your points, and, and you're good to go. So these are a little bit different because you have to put it in slope-intercept form first. Okay, let's try another one. And maybe on this one, after I get the uh, after I get the equation written up here, you can pause the video and try it on your own. And then start the video when you're done and see how you did. So you'll want to draw a graph for yourself. Okay, let's do... Let's do um, x. That's going to be a little tricky. x plus 3y equals negative 6. Now let's do let's do negative x plus 3y. Yeah, let's do that. Negative x plus 3y equals negative 6. All right. So if you want to pause it at this point and give it a try. All right, well, let's see how you did. So remember your first step is to isolate your y. So we need to move our x term to the other side. So I'm going to write plus x. On the left-hand side, then those will drop out. Negative x plus x is 0, so that'll be gone. And I'll have 3y equals. Now I can't combine these, so I'm just going to basically write them together on the same line. And I'm going to put my x term first so it mits, uh, fits this form. Uh, mx plus b. So I'm going to put x and then that's a minus 6 so I got to put negative 6 like that. Alright so now I got to get rid of this 3 so I'm going to divide every term by 3. Now let's see what we've got. These 3's cancel. So I have y equals now this is a little bit of a tricky part here. I thought I'd see how you did with this. If you want to think of this as a number times x, the number in front of the x here is a 1. So your slope that you want to write in front of your x is 1 third. That's the best way to write this is 1 third x minus 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, so now we can plot it. First step, plot the y-intercept, which is negative 2. There's my y-axis. Come down to negative 2, make a point. That's going to be my starting point for my slope. Find my slope. That's in front of the x, which is 1 third. So I'm going to rise 1, run 3. Slope is rise over run. Rise 1, run 3. From here, from my y-intercept. Here we go. Rise 1, run 3. Make a dot. Rise 1, run 3. Run 3. There we go. Make a dot. All right, so there's your line. Connect those points. Get a nice straight line this time. And there you go. There is the graph of the line negative x plus 3y equals negative 6, which means that every point on this line, every point on this line has an xy coordinate, even if they're fractions, like right there, that point has some x y coordinate. If we figured out what that x y coordinate was, it looks like it's negative 2 and a quarter or something and then down negative 3. We could plug those numbers in for x and y and they would make this equation true. There's infinitely many points, x's and y's, that would make this equation come out to be negative 6. And all those solutions are the points on this line. All right, well, I hope that helps. So remember, if your equation's not in slope-intercept form, that's the first thing you want to do is solve it for y, and then you can figure out the slope and y-intercept. You really can't figure out the slope and y-intercept if it's not in slope-intercept form. Once you get it in slope-intercept form, plot your y-intercept first. Always do that first. And then from your y-intercept, execute your slope, and then draw your line, and you're good to go.